are halfway through the Super League season. Two weeks down and two weeks to go. What a race we had in London. We backed it up on the weekend in Munich. And uh, now we head to Jersey. And speaking of heading to Jersey, of course, we've got Annie Emerson and Tim Don on the line. We've got rid of Chris McCormack. And live from Munich Airport, just for the next 10 minutes before he gets on his flight, is the Falcon Hayden Wild. Of course, won that famous victory in London. Followed it up with fourth. Uh, Alex Yee, as he does, ran away from the Falcon at the back end of the race in Munich. Hayden, uh, let's have a quick chat before you have to go, mate. So good uh, to see this racing from from a broadcast perspective. It looked incredible uh, in the Olympia Park, but the racing itself, very tough. How do you feel after that, and what was your takeaway from Munich? Yeah, it's great to be uh, back on the show. Um, yeah, Munich was tough. It was uh, it was punchy. The the course it looked easy on uh, on on, t- on television, but uh, those cobbles were pretty tough. Um, yeah, it was, it was a hard climb and it really took it out of the legs. So I think everyone kind of after that bike TT were definitely feeling it in the legs and uh, to try and transfer that uh, all that lactic acid in your legs to your arms um, going into the water for the first time and especially running down the hill was uh, was yeah was a pretty tough tough mission for sure. Were you surprised, mate, about the bike TT? Because you know, obviously for people who don't know, the equaliser format had a bike TT and then into a swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, pursuit start. And I heard you quoted as saying that you felt good, you felt strong on the bike. We know you're one of the best bikers, but you finished in 13th position. Johnny Brownlee, 14th. Vincent Lewis, 15th. We were surprised. Were you surprised? Um, yeah, no, I was pretty surprised. Um, actually, Johnny and Vincent actually finished in front of me. Um, I was well well behind. I, I thought I was catching Vincent, but uh, obviously the um, yeah the time doesn't, I guess, uh, well, lie. Um yeah, I'm still scratching my head about that one. I felt good um, around the course and uh, technically felt strong and really thought I was actually gaining time and uh, it looked like I was gaining time, but I was just losing time. So, uh, yeah, I was quite surprised. Um, so that kind of put me on the back foot from the get-go and, uh, yeah, diving in the water with the group was it was all, it was all good, but uh, kind of had to spend a lot more biscuits than I really wanted to in the water and then to try and funnel myself through the whole bike group was was pretty hard as well and to get on the run i was i was pretty cooked um as you can see when i got onto the second round and decided to um say hello to some uh say hello to the ground um i thought i was close enough to it but i kind of wanted to give it a little kiss and see what happened um then getting getting back into the water i I think i was a bit shaken i was kind of out of my rhythm and then had a bit of a mirror in the water and uh got back into the group had a good transition um and then yeah just kind of just felt a bit dusty on the ride. Everyone thought it was a kind of like a, a shark's tactic, but I was I was actually quite struggling on the back of the ride. Uh, we were pushing pretty hard, but we were still losing time. And uh, got onto the run and found some sort of legs, and uh, yeah, brought it home to fourth. So yeah, I've definitely got mixed emotions about uh, Munich. I don't I don't know what really happened, but uh, it just gave me more fire to come into into Jersey. Let me open up the floor, Timmy. And no doubt you've got a few questions and Annie for for Hayden as well. And I mean, you probably want him on your on your team, but unfortunately, what well, doesn't matter. The Eagles are dominating. I mean, what what do you think of Hayden's performance? And is there anything you want to know? Oh, I think the fact he's so hard on himself just shows you the class athlete he is. And I think, um, you know, fourth in a race like that, you know, still um, in the standings, um, you know, up the top as well. Um, you know, uh, when you fell down, the speed you were going, the angle you went down so hard. So you know, look after yourself this week. But yeah, as you said, it looked beautiful on TV. But yeah, you're you're really telling us how hard the course was. You know, cobbles, you know, on TV look look quite smooth, but they they're obviously really bumpy. There was lots of talk about tire choice and tire widths um, and cornering as well. Um, you know, I think that first time trial, you know, as much, as well as you didn't buy that well. I think some of the lads that really went for it, they suffered big time. So maybe that was that was to a degree a blessing in disguise. You weren't you weren't for the Black Tech City you know, from the start. But yeah, I just love watching you race out there. You know, you lay it down. You're a Falcon. You're a family, family member of the Eagles, really. So yeah, no, man. Yeah, man. All the way. Keep it it rolling. (laughs) Tenuous. Tenuous link between the Eagles and the Falcons entirely. (laughs) Um, That reminds me, speaking of hitting the deck, I mean, obviously that was a pretty tough one. But then at the end of the race, did you get hit yeah. in the sprint finish between Kenji Nina and I think Seth Ryder in the knee? Yeah, no, it was Vesco. It was Vesco. I was like, I was, I saw them behind me. I was like, okay, so I'm just going to jog it over the line. And then 
you know, put put my put my hands on my knees because I was pretty spent. And all of a sudden, I get I get side swipe from the back. I'm like, geez, what, what's going on here? Getting taken out, and the, the race is already finished. I thought it was the safest part of the race. Uh, well, I, I did say, oh, he looks down, he looks injured. We'll keep everyone updated as news comes to hand about that. And then I just forgot about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> hey, at, least you're honest. at least you're honest. <laughs> I've left everyone hanging on that one. Um, championship points wise, you, you you're equal with Johnny. So. Uh, and you're behind Vince, and you, we know what it's like when Vincent Lewis is in front. So you head to Jersey. You're actually heading over there early now instead of staying in London um, to get some time away from all of this relentless media that we're making you do. Back in Jersey, how do you feel about that one? We know Vince is uh, very quick around there, but you, mu- you must be happy to go back to something that we know a bit better. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed Jersey. Like I, um, I remember in 2019 where I got third place um, and a – and a run swim situation, so to have the bike back on this year would be uh, fantastic. Yeah, uh, you know, like uh, I remember in the qualifier, I went solo and felt really good. So if I can pre- perform uh, how I did in 2019 and, and up it in 2020, um, and yeah, just with the fuel fuel on the fire, I think I'm I'm ready to fully send it. So I'm looking forward to uh, really going for it. Annie, you got any? We haven't even spoken to you yet. Annie, hello, welcome to the show. You got any questions for the Falcon? <laughs> No, I'm okay because I only got back at one o'clock in the morning or one thirty or something like that. Um, no, um, I haven't really got any questions for him at all, but other than just to big him up and just say like what a superstar he is. You know, he, he loves the racing and it, it's just great to see him come out. And you didn't look as though you were suffering, um, even though, yeah, I guess after that fall going into the swim, we were a little bit worried about you. Um, but you kind of fought all the way. And pretty sure we'll see you back somewhere um, on the podium next weekend in Jersey, hopefully behind Johnny Brownlee. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not going to happen, sorry. Not this time. Yeah. I've got the wrong jersey again. Come on. Yeah. I don't know. He, keep, he, keep, he keeps sort of riffing into me about him climbing over top of me in the swim, but every time I've seen him, he's either pushed me backwards in the water or he, he climbing on top of me. Can't believe it. Those cheaters. <laughs> those cheaters. Yeah, I know they're t- Get the claws out. And he's been briefing them. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, team, I've got to head off because my flight's about to board. So uh, it's been All a right. pleasure talking. Uh, no worries. Get, get, that, uh, get that body sorted. We want to see you flying next week. And let's start, you know, with the equaliser. Something different. But that bike TT... Over a short enough distance to not destroy the field. And I think that was important in this one because we've seen it. We saw it in Hamilton Island last time we did one and, and there was huge gaps between people. People didn't even start on the 90-second rule. But the women's top 10 were all within 10 seconds. And the surprise for the women's was Emily Morier. So she would become the first of wit- of many eventually who burnt all their matches way too early and drop off the back. But she showed up the big bikers in a Maya Kingma and a Jess Learmonth who we expected more of. So uh, the end of 23 world champ did the job and Annie that was that was good to see and something different which you know it was a day of of upsets in terms of the TT yeah I mean it was interesting and I think you had to be really shrewd with how you took on that TT um she rode brilliantly she looked amazing on the bike but I I think what I was hearing from some of the athletes I, I managed to um interview Taylor Reid afterwards and he just said that he kind of went a bit too hard and then and then hit the water swam hard there and then went for the short shoot and he just burnt all his matches as you said so I think you had to be really tactical on that TT and I think Emily sort of like dropped back pretty quick after that effort and I don't know about what you think Tim but I think different athletes will have dealt physiologically with that TT um, in different ways some would have recovered much quicker than others some would have accumulated more lactic and um, it was a tricky one for some athletes. It really was. Yeah, I think that's the that's the key, especially for the women more than the men, because the men had longer to kind of flush it out if they were sensible watching the women's race. But yeah, the women, if they're kind of if they're going up to six to eight millimoles and higher, you know, they had such a short time. If they're not efficient at flushing that out, it's it's in their legs. They're turning to their arms in the swim. And the swim looked long um, um, this week. And, you know, even that start, running down there, you're just loading the quads again. And she's not used to being up the front, swimming at the front. And it's kind of like, do I keep pushing or do I let someone go past me? But if that happens, 
they're going to come past me, you know, like a, like a flock of eagles or something crazy like that. <clears throat> um, but um, yeah, no, so she was in a tough call and, you know, we saw that in the men's and definitely with some of the women and, you know, maybe it was luck, maybe it was, was brilliant that some of the, 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 the higher ranked athletes didn't get fast time so they could start in the middle on the feet. Um, and I wouldn't call it an individual time trial. I'd call it an individual sprint. I mean, what was it? 340, 346, you know, that is, that's such a specific kind of like, you know, you've got to train specifically to really knock that out of the park. Um, so yeah, I was surprised that, the you know, that, 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 yeah, some of the women didn't do as well as we thought they would like the Maya King was, you know, maybe like the Georgia Taylor Browns and Katie Zafaras. Yeah, King was only, I mean, we say that, she was only two seconds back off Moria and there was only yeah. 10 seconds across the top 10. So there wasn't much in terms of the margins. But, you know, after that all-British podium in London, uh, where Jess swam away with it, Jess Livermont, this time she absolutely smashed the field on that course as well. They barely caught sight of her until near the end when um, they took a few seconds out of her towards the back end. But were you guys surprised at what Jess Livermont dished up this time around? She controlled it from the opening uh, the opening swim, basically, when she swam past Emily Morier, and that, that was the end of it. She she doubled her advantage again in the second swim. Uh, her second swim time, she was swimming one fourteens, which is super fast, and just as fast as as Vincent Lewis did when he swam through the field. So, I mean, Annie, what did you, what did you think of her performance? And 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 when we extrapolate that to Jersey and Malibu, is there any way that anyone can do anything to stop Jess Learmont, or is it just her fatigue that might bring her back to the pack? I think realistically at the moment, the only athlete that is going to really challenge her probably is Georgia Taylor-Brown. Um, Georgia said she didn't have the best day. She just said she wasn't quite feeling it. And if you're not really feeling it, but you're still second, then that's a pretty good day in my book. I think where Jess is so superior is, well, we know her bike handling skills are great. She's really, really strong on the bike, but it's the swim. She's fatiguing herself a lot less than a lot of the other athletes over this like short 300 meters so her recovery is much quicker she's able to get on the bike you know and, and push you know bigger watts and, and maintain it better than the other athletes and come off strong for the run and we know the distance on the run you know it's good for her she she's better over the shorter distance although she was slightly getting run down um yesterday but I just honestly Georgia Taylor Brown is the only one I think at the moment that is going to really challenge her yeah, would you agree with that, Tim? I mean, you know, obviously Kay Zafir has had an improved showing. Um, you know, we've seen Beth Potter do well, but they just they don't quite seem necessarily in the same kind of form as Taylor Brown and Liam Hoff. Yeah, I think they're the three women, obviously Jess, you know, Georgia, Katie. I wasn't surprised how Jess raced and the kind of the splits she was putting out. I was more surprised, to be fair, like Annie leaded to, is Georgia, Katie, Sophie as well. There's been lots of talk about Sophie Coldwell, but they couldn't go with her, especially in that pack start. They, you know, that there was no hustle and bustle, no dive in, starting wide, going to an arrowhead. They were already right on the feet. But it's not just her swimming, it's that first transition, you know, and, and tr first transition doesn't end when you cross the mountain line. It's probably about 500 metres in. She gets yeah. up to power, up the hill, gets her feet in so smoothly. I mean, um, another eagle came out second again, uh, Vittoria, and, you know, she was left in a, her wake, you know, for the first bit of the bike. And that's nothing to do with power. That's just skill, whether she's training for that or it just comes natural to her, the flow. Um, but, yeah, she... You know, she attacks early and she keeps the pressure on and then all the, all the rest of the women are on the back foot. And, and looking at that course, I mean, there's, there was no way to, you know, in London, we had that long back straight where you could start to work um, and you can really see people, you know, like Hayden could see Johnny and Vince. So he had a, a target to catch them without his feet in in London. Here, you had to get your feet in to get up the hill over the cobbles and the women, the pack was too big. They were too, there was too big for them to work and do any damage. And Jess, one thing I love about Jess is, is she's so, yeah, whatever. I just, just, I wasn't going to wait. I wasn't going to look behind me. I was just going to go forward and keep on pushing. And that's such a great attitude, you know, in this race. Is, I also think Beth Potter, you know, jumping on the podium, if she can have a few good swims, she's going to build in confidence. You know, we saw in that second swim how well she was swimming right at the front. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say Jess is going to have it all her way, but you know, momentum's building and that's in our, in our game, that's, that's hard to, to take someone down when they've got that momentum. 
Yeah, she's taken the perfect 30 from 30 points, but Georgia Taylor Brown only two points behind her. So all it takes is a an off day from Jess Learmont and everything switches around. Uh, and then Katie Zafiris is a further four points back. And then there's a whole glut of um, of Brits, actually. There's five Brits in the top seven and the other two spots are the two Americans. It's quite unbelievable when you think of the British showing. And then when you compare that to the men's podium, two Brits on the men's podium as well. So five Brits and a Frenchman uh, across all the top steps. And you guys just must be... I know Annie's going to say something really smug now about British triathlon, so I'm just going to give us some, some space. Give us some space to say that. There you go. Come on, mate. How, how about it? Listen, um, you know we are great. I mean, what do you want me to say? I mean, you know, look at look at the Olympic. I mean, listen. What, what do you want me to say, Will? I mean, we are just you know bloody amazing i mean and i love the fact we're this little island and you you love to have a dig you know mac is not here today because he's driving across europe somewhere you know about our weather and how crap it is and all the rest of it but somehow for a sport that you know lends itself far more to warmer climates not sure what's happened to the australians we'll talk about that in a minute um who where are they no we won't Um, it's not on the list. <laughs> They're all in lockdown um, still. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, we're just producing. I, I think, you know, success breeds, you know, it's a bit cheesy, but success breeds success, you know. And, you know, the athletes that have come out of Leeds, what they've done there is absolutely amazing. You know, Alex Yee is, wow, you know, just, oh, we'll talk about him. Hold on. Bit, Alex Yee's a Loughborough boy. Alex Yee's a Loughborough he's a, boy. He's a, he's a, you're funny. absolutely right. He's a Loughborough boy. Um, but you know what? The, the camaraderie is great. They all, you know, they all all help one another they all back one another you know that's not the same in in every team from each different country it's simply not you know our girls tend to to get on very well and really do support one another they were all up out for dinner together last night and you know it's just you know that it's they're all very chilled together and they're all very very supportive so you know maybe it's down to that i don't know but at the moment the the, the brits are rocking it for sure yeah, when, when you look at the caliber of the athletes that couldn't make the mixed team relay team um, that won gold, you can see exactly how strong they are and how deep that, that runs. Uh, one thing I was thinking about, and uh, something to pull out, and obviously Jess, Jess uh, took the short shoot uh, from last time it was Lopez, uh, always an eagle apparently that takes the short shoot. Um, but um, And she converted that to victory. Uh, Vincent Lewis, incredible swim, we'll get to that in a minute. He converted that to victory. Hayden Wild converted the short shoot to victory. So we've had three wins for three people that have earned the short shoot. And the only other one was um, Matt Hauser, who got eliminated. So everyone who's earned one has been and has been around to use it has won so far. So do you think that, and, then, and you can see in the comments and stuff, and we're obviously sensitive to that at Super League Triathlon. Some people love the short shoot. Some people don't like it because they think that it takes away from the racing. Do you, do you guys understand that? I mean, I'm in the camp that I love it because it makes... It's not just the end of a race, which is important. I mean, every single part of a race is important in Super League. Is there any like what? Is there any point to what people are saying when they don't like it, or is that is that just a traditionalist thing? I, because I I personally think it's great, Tim. I mean, Tim, what do you think about it, and can you understand people's criticisms? Oh, of course, I can. There's you know, there's always going to be haters. There's always going to be lovers. I think um, there was a great interview with um, Johnny after the race, and obviously they asked him about the short shoot. And he said, you know what, it's one of those things you absolutely love when you get it and you bloody hate it when you don't. And I think that's the, it's always going to have that 50-50. But it's not, you know, Super League, we talk about full gas racing. You know, we talk about going till you blow. You know, we talk about all those things. But it's more than that. Tactics are involved. Positioning. Now we've got this new element of the team, uh, team tactics as well. But on top of that, the short shoot's just another facet of that. And I I think it's brilliant. Um, you know, um, and I think arguably today, um, would Vince have won? Let's be honest, as much as I love a cheater or not a cheater, you know what I mean. I still think Vince would have won if he hadn't have taken the short shoe. Jess would have won still. So, you know, when people look at it, it's not always a defining moment, but it just adds, it adds spice into it. And I think that's the beauty about Super League Triathlon. They're setting their own rules. And yeah, I'm for it. Bring it on. Uh, yeah. What about you, Annie? I mean, should we make it shorter? I mean, because if you if you looked at that, you saw Johnny attack multiple. Like he tried to t- tried to put, turn the screws on Vince, and Vince knew that he just had to cover him. If it was a little short, if it was half the distance, would would that make a difference, or would it be better or worse? 
No, I, d I don't think really shortening it would have made any difference. I, it was interesting, Kate Mason, um, our lovely new presenter, while you're not here, Will, but we know you'll be back. That, that's um, it, yes. Just while said, I'm not here, that's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> yes, that's it, yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, we love you both. You, you know, you you, you, anyway, let's move on. Um, Kate um, <laughs> said, she said, oh, I'm not sure about this short shoot. She said, because... This is such a great race I'm watching between Johnny and Vince. I want to see it come down to the wire. And of course, with the short shoe, I'm not going to see a race. But she's talking very much from someone who's just looked at sport very conventionally. And we know that Super League is not conventional in any way, shape or form. And that's why we love it. Um, and I think even though that Johnny is my athlete, I still think that Vince is virtually impossible to be on a sprint finish. So even if there hadn't been a short shoe, if Johnny hadn't broken him, it still would have been quite difficult. But it would have been perhaps nice to have seen him have the opportunity to have a go. But, you know, chatting with some of the athletes, some of the new athletes in Super League, you know, get a bit twitchy about the changes and, and things. But this is not, you know the World Triathlon Series. This is Super League and this is what we love about it. It's unpredictable. You know, it throws out challenges to the athletes, not just for the sake of it, but to make it interesting to, to you know, for the spectators, for the athletes, you know, they have to think a lot more deeply about their racing than when it's just a 1500 meter swim, a 40k bike, a 10k run, you know, and that's part of the fun of it and, and the challenge. I don't, I don't know what you think. Do you guys agree or have I gone off on one of my waffles? <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, I, I don't really know what your point was, but, yeah, whatever it was, I agree with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do, and I think the the athletes become so comfortable. You know, they race um, Yokohama every year, the same swim course, the same bike, the same run. I used to do that when I was younger, um, and it's the same hotel, the same coffee shop, and it's just we know what to do, repeat again, go to the next WTS, repeat again, go to the next one, repeat Hamburg, you know, Leeds. That, it's the same. Well, this is different in itself and just the format. You know, it's almost like in Formula One. We now have, you know, qualifying on Friday night in some races for the sprint race on Saturday. And then that, that that's the pole for, for the Grand Prix on Sunday. You know, that's the Super League are not afraid to try things. And I think, um, you know, I think, you know, yeah, even the format yesterday in itself was was unique. So, no, I'm, I'm for the short shoot and for mixing it up. Um you know, I think, you know, the athletes from who I've talked to over the last couple of weeks, you know, don't, you know, he he earned that. And, and, and I tell you what, he bloody earned that yesterday. When you start yeah. a 300 metre swim, 11 seconds down, and we're not yeah. talking you've got your own lane. He's having to go past, what was it? The, was he 14th, 14th 13th, 14th in the individuals? Yeah. yeah. He overtook, third, he went round 13 bodies with one two, two 90 degree turns and a steep run up god damn he had every bit of that short shoe i tell you yeah and and a really big challenge from taylor reed as well from new zealand because taylor was pretty much i think first into transition but it was the speed the experience and the shrewdness of of, of vanson that gave him that short shoe at the end of the day and taylor said that was the goal if if an eagle if um uh, a shark can't get the short shoe i want to get it to take it away from someone um, but yeah, I mean, that just goes, you know, Vince is, he's changing into fifth gear, you know, he's, 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 full, he's in full flight now. Yeah. Well, let's take it back a step on the men's because, um, oh, by the way, Formula One, Australian won it yesterday. So <laughs> Lewis Helmsman crashed. <laughs> yeah. Got that. All right. We'll take that. In a, was, was he in a British car? Just that, yeah. British engineer. Um, just, yeah, I don't know, right. literally just, just saying. Yeah. Relevant. Doesn't he live in? Doesn't he live in Monaco? I thought he lived in Monaco. What's going on? Uh, he's from Perth, mate. He's from Perth. Will is becoming very okay. bitter. A builder from Perth. Very right? bitter. Or is it a JCB digger? <laughs> whatever, whatever. All right, your British guy is in a German car, so you know. Oh, no. Where are you going, right. mate? Do you know podcast? what this is? You know what yes, that is? I do. Of course, I do. Very good from you, Daniel, Ric Daniel Ricardo's signature, right there, baby. I'm oh, all for DR, man. I love the fella. I stayed no, in his apartment in Santa Monica when I was training. Um, oh, yeah, I'm dropping too many names. But, yeah, he's a really nice guy. <laughs> Does he have anything signed from Tim Don? Um, yeah, he's got uh, – we always do shoeies together, so he's got a couple of on shoes. He loves it. Oh, right. Yeah, we do shoeies yeah. together. That's lovely. Like thinking <laughs> of the um, shoey, I, I love it. <laughs> All right, so let's talk. Let's talk the men's and let's talk the TT. Seth Ryder, how good was that? 
showed up everybody. Obviously, the guy's having a great few months, uh, and he puts down a huge bike. I, I almost couldn't believe the timing monitors because you've got, as I said, and I got it back to front earlier on, but like 13th, 14th, 15th are our podium getters from London, and they're languishing down in the second page of the timing sheets. Meanwhile, Seth Ryder lays down a, a, a blistering hot time, and so does Max Studer, Annie. Oh, yeah, that, that guy has huge talent. Um, oh, God, you know, we know that from having watched him in Olympics and a uh, World Cup race earlier on this year. Oh, God, he's such a lovely guy. Um, I think he I think he might struggle a little bit on the bike at the moment in terms of the, I mean, it was ferocious, the bike. I had my heart in my mouth as they came back down the hill, the transition for the first time. Vasco Velazza was absolutely bloody incredible. I mean, he was hammering it. Um, and I think Studa gets a little bit twitchy when, when things are... No, I don't think he's afraid of the hard work. I mean, he comes from Brett Sutton's camp, but I think he, he's just a little bit nervous on the bike. I know that he was involved in quite a big crash a few years ago, um, and I just think he needs another year or two of experience of racing at that kind of intensity. But what a ride. Yeah, to start with, he was on top of the leaderboard for, for some time before um, Seth came and took it away from him. Seth, I mean, last week in London on the last um, race, Seth dragged Alex round for three laps. He was really driving the pace. You know, he's riding so strong and he's got a swim to back it up. And the same with Max. One thing with Max is um, he reminds me a bit of AJ Annie, the way his position is on the bike. He's, he's quite, mm. he's a tall fella. He's um, quite aggressive at the front, but he's um, he had his saddle. He has his saddle quite high and very far forward in that time trial mm. position. That puts a lot more weight forward, not back. So technically, it's harder. AJ used to crash a lot. I used to train with a fella all the bloody time, and he wasn't the best. It's not that he wasn't the best, but his position didn't allow him to shift his weight back, so he couldn't keep mm. it down. And I think that's great on the, you know, the as we said, the Yokohamas, the Leeds courses. But on these tight, twisty corners, you need to be more. Um, Kind of, uh, you know, yeah. you need to be back a bit on the back wheel, don't you? Yeah, yeah. you need to be technically yeah. aware of your position, yeah. and he can't physically do it. And you've got no chance to to kind of get into that because it's like bang, 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 run, swim, bang, bang, bang. You know, it's so quick and fast. But they've got the power, those two boys, and they're riding really well. Um, and I think that would have given them confidence. And I think you know, we, we're, we're talking about the same athletes again, but. You know, there's so many of them, you know, in the top 10. You know, Jake Burke whistled. He had a cracking race. He's slowly getting back up there. And Kinji, you know, he's always been up there as well. So I think, you know, those guys are, 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 are having an impact on how, you know, Vince, Hayden, Johnny and Alex and Vasco are having to race. But, yeah, no, I'm proud of my Eagles getting up there. What about, um, and you mentioned, uh, you bring everything back to the Eagles, don't you? It's everything's back to, the, yeah, you're the ultimate team. Um how about Vasco, though? I want to talk about Sark for a second. And, and obviously, um, you know, he's the ultimate team player, Vasco Velasa. He's delivered, he delivered Hayden up uh, on the bike and sacrificed himself somewhat in the second bike. Uh, he did the same thing in London, ran, ran Hayden up. He's, he's, he's a special racer, Vasco Velasa. His goggles came off and then he posted about it yesterday. He's like, it's only an excuse if you, if you let it hold you back. And he, he's just, he's got that youthfulness where he's just like, I'll just attack everything. and But he's also thinking about the, the team at the same time. And I just think he, he's a guy we're going to be talking about a lot for the next 10 years. And I just, I really like the way he's racing. And of course, he's, he's picking up top fives too. Um, and, and he's doing the job for the Sharks, Annie. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a, it's a special talent. And, and he's kind of wise beyond his years because I think he's younger than Alex Yee, isn't he? He's 21, 22. Um, but when you talk to him, you know, he doesn't make any excuses. He's very articulate, he's got very, very good English. Um, he moved, uh, there's a great documentary, isn't there, that Super League did on him um, about what he, when moving from Portugal to Sweden. He's very methodical. I wouldn't, you know, he's up there with the Norwegians in terms of, you know, how meticulous he is in, in his training. But he's a huge talent. And once he gets the, the swim right and uh, just maybe not one more gear, but... Um, yeah, no, I mean, he's got it. He's got all of it. And it, for him, it's just a bit more experience and a little bit more time racing. And I think you're absolutely right, Will. He's going to be, he's going to be doing really big things. But he's on an eagle, hey? Um, uh, he'll come over. Don't worry. I'll get him working for the boys. Don't worry. Also, you know, he's coached by Joachim Willem. And if anyone knows their history, you know, he went to Sydney Olympics. He trained and raced for Assistem, which was 
the number one team at the time with Simon Lessing. Um, and, um, you know, so not only has he got obviously a great coach who's physically getting him in the right shape, you know, Joachim's been there, done that, you know, but he's also seen how the best of the best do it. Um, so, you know, that insight as well, you know, whether it's the tactics or the commitment, you know, um, yeah, but he's a selfless fella and, you know, he's not afraid of, of, of hard work. And you could see with his comments after, I genuinely believe he meant that. He was like, it happens, that's how you deal with it. And, you know, he's wise beyond his years. Um, yeah, I think he's probably the only one so far I'd call a shark, not a guppy. <laughs> the sharks are not doing so bad, are they? It's the rhinos that are really battling. The rhinos are languishing down the back of the pack. Meanwhile, uh, the eagles have got double the points. And, and we just haven't seen much from the rhinos overall. We're, uh, we're poor Ronnie. I feel bad for him. The cheetahs are you what second last? Second last? Am I correct? Yes, yeah, second last. Annie, you had both number one draft picks. He's second last. But the rhinos are way off the back. What's going on there? Oh, I don't know. Um, it, it's you know, it's. I was thinking about that yesterday, and you know, it's such a fine line in Super League racing to get it right, you know, um, and to get those top points. And I think what we're seeing this this season is is the greatest Super League racing that we've ever seen um the guys are on fire you know many of them off the back of the olympics um and you only have to just be a little bit of a fraction off and you're gonna have a crap day you know and poor old ronnie is is seeing that that it's just not coming together for him i mean you know we're half the way through the season you know there's still a lot to play for you know but it's difficult to you know i think bet against johnny vince and georgia and jess but you know there will be some changes you know with the travel and, and stuff so fingers crossed for, for for the rhinos ronnie's a good guy but he can stay in fifth position <laughs> Well, one of your big point getters, <laughs> one of your big point getters in the Eagles, uh, Timmy, is Alex Yee. So, I mean, he he was he was third. So, as we said, the Brits took five of the six podium places across the weekend, and he said afterwards that he made a ton of mistakes and that he's learning and he's happy to do it week in week out and learn these little things. We saw one on screen where he missed his box, and that was the, that was the same moment that um, that Hayden had the accident too. So then suddenly it was a race in two, and from then on it was Johnny and Vince. Uh, for the win. But Alex, I mean, he's he's so strong in every discipline. I mean, he's an incredible runner, but he's not, in his own words, now he's not necessarily a runner who can swim a bit and bike a bit. He, he's, But he's got little one percenters by his own admission that he's still working on, Tim. You know, he's definitely, you know, I, I would say, and I'm being harsh here, I'd say, you know, a year ago he wasn't a complete athlete and he's definitely changed that mindset. He used to be a runner. Um, now he is really working on the swimming and the um, the bike and, and his race craft. You know, he went past his, when he did the interview, he said he missed his bike, you know, to put his, you know, to, sorry, to put his run shoes in to then go in for the swim. But the fact that he knew he wanted to exit, enter the swim first to make people go around him, he was tactically aware. It didn't plan out, but he's already thinking like, you know, a Vincent, like a Johnny, and he's so young. Um, and I think he's just got that top trump. Top, top, um, he's got that top trump of his run, but he's not afraid to to make mistakes. But the, I mean, he makes mistakes, but he's not afraid to learn from them, admit them, and go forward. He's not just brushing it off as, oh yeah, it was a bad race, never mind. He's like cross with himself; it won't happen again. Um, and again, he was even off the back of that second group in the last bike coming out the water. He was not with, um, you know, when Vasco was on the front driving, he, he you know, we, we saw how powerful and strong Vasco was, you know, but he bridged the cross and then he still ran away from everyone. Um, so yeah, without a doubt, you know, he's, he's learning and getting faster. You know, I think third this week, uh, I'll be happy with second next week and, you know, finish, finishing with a W in, um, in Malibu. <laughs> the problem the problem with these outrageous comments is that they're not outside the realm of possibility and you're winning by a street at the moment. I mean, that's really annoying. It is annoying, but I love it that it's annoying. <laughs> no, but hey, listen, it's, you know, these athletes, all of them, are, uh, you know, everyone's fighting for every spot. And, um, you know, it's probably the manager that picks the correct team that's, that's going to, you know, that, that win. What can I say? <laughs> okay, right. And, 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 <laughs> Was he picking the guy that runs sub two forty pace for the long, last one point eight k's? That was a blistering run. Yeah, on those hills, and 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 it wasn't an even run. You know, he picked it up on the second lap. Um, you know, that's what I love about him. He, he hadn't given up on catching the two at the front. If they started to play a bit of cat and mouse, 
And, you know, if Vince hadn't got the short shoot, they might have done a bit of caginess because no one wanted to lead into the last five, 600 metres when Alex was going full gas. Um, and that's what I love about him. He, he always finishes spent and, um, you know, he's, he's, he's learning his craft and the Super League is a fantastic place for someone who's already got two Olympic medals. To, we're talking about a, a kid who's got two Olympic medals and he's learning his craft and he's getting third. You know, it's frightening, you know, how fast the game's moving. Yeah, that's very true. But um, those little those little bits and pieces that you can make up for an Olympic distance race, um, there's no room for them in Super League. And that's why we've seen Super League athletes come into Olympic distance racing and, and uh, the Olympics and World Championships and dominate um, because all of those little things are showing up. And, and if you're good enough to uh, look at that, improve on that uh, and make sure you're flawless next time around, it always pays off in the end. What do we see in Jersey. Um, we go back for the fourth time. It's a spiritual home of Super League. Um, you know, we've had incredible crowds the last two weeks in, in brand new locations. We're going to see a huge one in Jersey, um, which we always do. And it's, it's a fantastic place to race. Uh, they're all, or a, a bulk of the athletes are aware of it. They've raced there before. They know what's going to come. Do we see the same people um, on the podium? Do we see an all British podium for the women for the third time in a row? Let's start with that. What do you think? And if we don't see an all-British podium, who is the person that's going to put themselves on there? And is it Katie Zafiris? Annie, what do you think? Oh, that's, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to sort of carry on saying the same things, but I think Jess is going to be really tough to beat in Georgia. It's, uh, it's a challenging swim. The water's going to be a little bit colder. The, the water temperature was perfect in Munich. Um, it's going to be a bit colder there. There is um, a brilliant run out of the swim and, of course, back into it. Uh, quite a long run um, back to transition and, and that can you know some athletes can pull back a few places there or they can lose, lose places you know it's a challenging bike course and as you said you know it's, it's steeped in Super League history um, the crowds will be out it's going to be amazing racing but Jess is going to be the one to beat there definitely when, when we look at the women's race. Is there any surprises we're going to see uh, perform this time around? I mean, have we have, have we seen the best of someone like a Rachel Clammer or a Taylor Spivey, especially Clammer. She came good late on in the race, but she didn't have a great first week, but she certainly picked it up in the second week and she probably hasn't performed to her best. I mean, what do you think, Tim, or are we going to see the usual suspects and we end up with another Learmont, Potter, Taylor Brown, Sephiris top four? You know, I think, you know, starting with a swim and I'm, I promise you I'm not harping on, but the Eagles are such good swimmers and they're starting together. So they have that advantage. You know, all the good swimmers are starting one side and there's there's definitely less fighting when you're in the team. But Rachel Klammer, this is her format, the swim, bike, run. She's very savvy technic tactically in a race like this. You know, she's one, probably one of the, the veterans of Super League sport. Um, I'd love to see Beth Potter you know, deliver on some early season promise from the arena games and that amazing run she had. You know, that swim, second swim yesterday will give her confidence. Um, it's all about the, the finer margins in Jersey. That first swim bike run is crucial on positioning. If you're in the lead group, that's great, but you need to be right at the front because if a gap opens out of a corner or through transition, um, yeah, it's going to be tough. But even things like you know, was it Jess, you know, when she was putting her run shoes in to go in the swim, she remembered to take her helmet out the box and put it on her bike for when she got out the swim. You know, her and John are thinking of everything. So, yeah, I, Jess is going to be the woman to beat. But I think, I think, um, yeah, we, we're going to see a different person on the podium with her that we haven't seen so far this year. Yeah, I think it, I think it, I think we could be looking at like possibly Sophie kind of moving up as well a bit. She she kind of warms into the race as she gets stronger. The run gets stronger as she goes. And I think, you know, kind of being, you know, relatively young athlete, I think we could see her um in Jersey. She's raced there before, um, just kind of a little, little bit more confident. And I think it is definitely more her format and it will suit her. So I'm not just saying because she is one of my athletes, but I think we're gonna see a bit more of Sophie Colwell next weekend too. Why are you smirking, Will? No, I just what I'm what I'm no, not at all. Don't be so sensitive. First of all, I just I, I think what made me smile then is how much the managers and everyone and the athletes are getting behind the team concept. Because to be fair, I mean, I was I wasn't skeptical about the team concept, but I was wondering exactly how much the athletes would buy into something like this. When you create new teams, it takes a while for people to get any kind of you know you're just creating them out of thin air. 
it's obviously there's money is 320,000 US dollars and that means every athlete gets paid and that, that's fantastic and that's outstanding. But within a race environment, I was wondering whether we were going to see athletes consciously thinking about their team and, and how they would help each other and also how whether or not like a team manager might go, hey, Victoria, get out there and, you, you know, you could lead the swim and bike and pick up all those points and deliver a short shoot, but you're probably going to die in the back end, but go do it. Whether or not that would ever happen or whether or not... That's a great team or... talk. That's a great team talk, Will. You're going to die <laughs> at the back end, whatever. I'll, have to, I'll take that one to Jersey, to the, to the ladies. I will, I will. So, I'll a wise man that. told me. <laughs> I never claim to be a great motivator of people. I'm just saying, you know... You could like because she could potentially pick up fifty five thousand dollars because if she picks up the swim and bike points mm. and leads them all, and then she's part of the Eagles and she picks the fifteen up, that's a very good month um, by anyone's standards, that's, except for Macca's. It's a good year. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a sad it's a it's a lean month for Chris McCormack, but it's a great month for everybody else. Fifty five k, but <clears throat> but what what I have enjoyed is that it really looks like during the racing. That the team elements are into, and you alluded to it there, Tim, is that you know when we start, you start on the podium, you've got your your three eagles around you. When you go swimming, you're not going to engage in the same kind of argy bargy. So it is actually happening that after two weeks of this concept, there it's having an effect on the racing. Would you agree with that from your team's perspective? Um, and you will start with you. I mean, what have have your cheaters been working together, or what's the feedback been, and and have you seen it from the other teams? We've got um yeah definitely and you know in terms of like the the chat that we had on Saturday you know everyone sort of agreed that you know in the sort of racing that we saw at the weekend the format that they could definitely um help one another out unfortunately at the moment we got two bigger gaps to to Johnny and the rest of the team you know Aaron Royal is definitely an athlete that could be up there and, and I thought he looked, just looked a little bit sharper and a little bit happier yesterday I mean it wasn't quite the overall result he wanted but you know we, we at the moment you know. The the, the other guys, um, Alessandro, Fabian, and Tamas. Um, oh my gosh, I've lost my thingy. Sorry, <laughs> um, I've lost my thingy. That sounds a bit dodgy. Um, Tamas, Toth. You know that these these guys are really you know passionate about what they're doing, but. It, they're, they're finding it not tough but you know super league is, is tough and then in the women sophie and maya can definitely work together but you know maya is you know she wants to go out there and win and i won't say she's struggling but this is really new to her um and i think she's learning a few things every race and and she'll get stronger so yeah i mean the team the team talks are really good and really positive and they bring something really exciting to the racing what about your eagles? What do you tell your eagles prior to a race like that? Caca! Caca! <laughs> oh, God. Is that it? That's it. That's all I need to do, Will. They know. They know. That's an eagle talk. <laughs> no, listen. You know, it's all about commitment. No, I, I don't mean. I mean, I don't mean commitment. It's, it's commitment to the race, commitment to the process, for that individual process. And I think that's that's you know they've, they've got to race for themselves. You know, it's such a tough sport. And, um, you know, so I definitely, you know, we lay that on the line, but then there is in the back of the line that we, it's, you know, it, given a certain situation, you know, let, let's, let's work, you know, let's, you know, the, the, the working for more is better. So, you know, when uh, Victoria is towards the front, she's definitely going to commit on the bike. Um, she's not going to get, in, you know, in someone's way, you know, um, you know, if Vicky's in the second group, maybe she doesn't do as much work. Um, but then I don't want her to sit at the back and see the race going away from her. So, you know, we are we are chasing them down. You know, I've had a, a, a WhatsApp message this long from Marco last night apologizing to me because he got he got he got he, he got the 90 second roll. And I'm like, dude, you know, so so it is he is feeling, you know, part of something, part of a team. Um, you know, and that's that's really good in a way. Um, and obviously I yeah, I just said he obviously didn't get the memo. Um, but no, you know, I, I think the the, the, the team talks are, are, are definitely um you know, are definitely more for the individual in, in our team and they know what they need to do. But, um, yeah, it's a great concept. And I think, as you said, Will, people are buying into it quicker than we thought. And, you know, I think come Malibu when there's like, double points, you know, and, and it's not going to be a foregone conclusion. And, you know, for first, second, third, fourth, fourth, fifth, it is going to mix up but behind the Eagles. So, yeah, I'm really excited going forward and I'm yeah, chuffed to be back on the ground at Jersey and, and Malibu.
Oh, I absolutely love hearing that from from Marco that he would that he'd buy in and almost oh, apologise. Man, That's I felt so sorry for him. He, oh man, and I was like, dude, come on, this is this is triathlon. I know how tough it is. You were ill, you know, you 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 miss a beat and and it's gone in this race. But you've got the form. You got the fastest leg at the Olympics, and he just it's just like, what happened? How did this, you know? And I'm like, just patience. You know, he's a young young padawan that just needs a bit of guidance. But yeah, you know, and he feels bad for the team. I'm like, first of all, no one feels like that. You know, we're we're, we're in it together, guy. Ah, uh, that's fantastic. Um, I mean, it's obviously. Not for him, but he'll bounce back stronger than ever when we head to Jersey. And, and we do that on Saturday. And all the details are at superleaguetriathlon.com. Uh, before we go, so we're going to go with Jess. And, are we going to go with Jess and Vince? Do we all agree on Jess and Vince are the, are the favourites? Or can we go somewhere else? Anyone? They're the favourites. Oh. They're the favourites. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm, go- I'm going for Johnny to win. And I'm going. Johnny. I'd love to. Go- We'd all love to see Johnny win at home, would we not? Yeah. I'm going to, t- I'm going to go for Johnny for the win. It'll be, it'll be on the short shoot, you know. Sophie's going to be on the podium as well. Mm. All right, I want to so see um, Van Riel get up there. I mean, he crashed the day before, did I hear? And I think that, you know, that it was a, always a shock to the system. On the bike, he was like bobbing around like this on the individual time trial, while lots of the other guys were a lot still, more aero. Did you see Vince and um, some of the women had long socks on with the trip lines for aerodynamics? You know, they were, you know, they're really, you know, every second counts. <laughs> wow. I did not notice that. Man, you got good eyes. Come you on, Will. Well, come on. <laughs> Should have been watching more closely. Uh, right. Well, thanks for showing me up there at the back end. Uh, let's let's end it. Let's finish it now. Uh, that is the Short Shoot Show. We hope you've enjoyed it. There's been plenty of banter, no doubt. It's been, uh, it's been fun for us. We hope it's been fun for you. Make sure you tune in. Jersey, we go back there for the fourth time. It's on Saturday. Uh, check your local guides. All the details are on superleaguetriathlon.com. Thank you very much, Tim Don. Thank you, Annie Emerson. Thank you. Thanks, Will.